Here are 10 steps to solve programming problems. This is by Valinda Chan. So the first one is to read the problem at least three times. Because this is simple because uh, simply because you can solve a problem you don't understand. Sometimes you don't have to assume because let's say for example the problem sounds familiar that you already know the rest of the requirements. So you have to read the problem at least three times. Then work through the problem manually with at least three set of sample data. So you do it manually. So and then you place, let's say for example, you have, uh, you're going to solve a problem to add two numbers. So you think of sample data, five and seven. Then maybe also, so you try to do it manually. Then think of at least three sets of sample data you can use. Consider corner and edge cases as well. So when we say corner case, this is a problem or situation that occurs outside of normal operating parameters, specifically when multiple environmental variables or conditions are simultaneously at extreme levels, even though each parameter is within the specified range for that parameter. Let's say, for example, you are trying to uh, get the average grade of a student. So what if, for example, one grade is lacking? Or maybe what will happen if, let's say, one grade is not the correct grade? Let's say it exceeds the range. Or we also have edge cases, problems or situation that occurs only at an extreme or maximum or minimum operating parameter. So these are things that we should consider. We should more or less create sample data and try to work through the problem manually. The third one is to simplify and optimize your steps. So if you have your steps, try to simplify them. Simplify them. So look for patterns. Because the patterns, this will become uh, loops. Pwede ito maging loops. And see if there's anything you can generalize. So, yung generalize maybe can become functions. And see also if you can reduce any steps or if you are repeating any steps. Again, ito yung mga patterns. So, pag repeated yung steps, malamang pwede siyang going loop later. Then, maybe you should write a should code. So, even after you work out general steps, writing out should code that you can translate into code will help with defining the structure of your code and make coding a lot easier. Write should code line by line. You can do this either on paper or as comments in your code editor. If you're starting out a fine blank screen to be daunting or distracting, I recommend doing it on paper. So, gumawa ng parang should code. So, should code, parang it resembles a programming language or parang yung programming, parang narrative. Or that will more, parang it, it is always, uh, almost as, almost the programming language. Kaya lang, you don't have to worry about the syntax. What you should worry is more on the logic, not the syntax of the code you are writing. And then, once you are more or less sure with your should code, then translate your should code into code. So, ito na yung into a programming language code. And then, debug. So, when you have your should code ready, translate each line into real code in the language you are working on. Then again, simplify and optimize your code. So, you have your code. You again simplify and optimize your code. So, according to... How do you pronounce the name? It's Edsger. It's Dijkstra. Simplicity is prerequisite for reliability. So, Dijkstra is actually a Dutch computer scientist and early pioneer in many research areas of computing science. So, what are your goals in simplifying and optimizing? So, these are the questions that maybe you should be asking yourself in optimizing your code. So, what are your goals for simplifying and optimizing? So, Maybe one of your goals is how else can you make the code readable? So how can you make your code readable? Are there any more extra steps you can take out? So if there are extra steps that 
uh, are really not uh, necessary, then maybe you can take them out. Are there any variables or functions you ended up not even needing or using? Maka nag-declare-declare ng variable, pero yung iba hindi po rin magagamitin or baka hindi naman kailangan. Are you repeating some steps a lot? So see if you can define in another function. So, pag may parulit ulit na steps, maybe you can define it in another function. The low button. So, are you repeating some steps? Yeah. So, are there better ways to handle edge cases? So, yun yung mga edge cases. Yung mga, for example, extreme cases like paano kung negative, paano kung positive, paano kung super taas yung number, etc. Paano kung super dami ng data. So, these are edges, edge, edge cases. So, debug. So, check the console to see what the error message says. So, pag may lobas na error message, huwag sabihin ka agad na error. So, just you try to read the error message. Sabihin, tinan ko anong sinasabi ng error message. Sometimes, it will point out a line number. You need to check. Tingnan nyo yung line number. So, this, this will give us a rough idea of where to start. Although, the issue sometimes may not be at this line at all. So, pwedeng may sasabihin siyang line number at least doon mo titignan pero hindi ibig sabihin na doon sa line number na yun palagi yung error it can be in another line it can be in another line baka previous line siguro so comment out chunks or lines of code and output what it what I have so far so to quickly see if the code is behaving how I expected it so kung minsan may mga lines of code na i-comment out mo muna so while you are debugging and Uh, yeah, so doon mo makikita kung tama ba yung behavior ng program so I can always uncomment the code as needed use other sample data if there are scenarios I did not think of and see if the code will still work so panang ganun sa yung pagtest ng shield code magkawa ng sample data save different versions of my file if I'm trying out a completely different approach So, mayroon ka nang ginawa na medyo okay pero parang gusto mong subukan ng another approach. You have to save versions of your file. Huwag mong i-resin ka agad yung dati. I don't want to lose any of my work if I end up wanting to revert back to it. Baka mamaya yung naisip mong bagong approach hindi gagana. At least you can always go back to your uh, previous approach. Write useful comments. So, you may not always remember what every single line meant a month later. And someone else working on your code may not know either. That's why it's important to write useful comments to avoid problems and save time later on if you need to come back to it. So, in writing problems, especially kung medyo complicated na ito, baka kung babalikan mo yung code mo, memang hindi ka na maalala kung bakit mo ginawang ganon. That's why it's always very important to write comments especially on uh, complicated parts of your program so get fa- get feedback through code reviews so get feedback from your teammates professors and other developers you can also check out stack overflow so baraming code yan si stack overflow tinan mo baka mayroong mabigay ng ibang approach sa, sa ginawa mong code see how others tackle the problem and learn from them so there are sometimes several ways to approach a problem find out what they are and you'll get better quicker at coming up with them yourself and then of course last but not the least is practice practice and practice even experienced developers are always practicing and learning if you get helpful feedback implement it. May nakit na alaman kang feedback, try mong gamitin. Redo a problem or do similar problems. Keep pushing yourself. With each problem you solve, the better a developer you become. So, thank you for viewing this video and I hope these tips will become useful to you. Thank you.